Hello and welcome to the second lesson on quadratic equations. Today we're going to talk about discriminants. So without further ado, let's go into the notes. So if you download our notes on the Discord server or on our website, this is what you get. And right off in the first page, you get an idea of who we are going to talk about today. We are going to talk about the quadratic formula. Because in the first lesson, we did not talk about the quadratic formula much. We talked about completing the square and cross factorization right so let's do a quick review on uh, the other two methods before we move on to quadratic formula so first of all uh, the reason why we are learning quadratic equations or expressions is because we use it to solve real life uh, problems real life situations and if you remember right uh, the example that i gave last week was about the fence if i have 10 meters of fence what is the maximum area that i can enclose so uh, one of the methods that we use is cross factorization and that gives us the roots and from the roots we can find the maximum or the minimum point uh, in this case in that question about the fence it is the maximum point right i want to find the maximum area that this fence can give me all right uh, last lesson we also talked about another method right and this method just gives us the maximum or minimum point straight away uh, without finding the roots at all, right? And that is called completing the square. Okay. If you wanted to, you can also find the roots. Yeah. If you wanted to after that. But the main thing that is good for is finding the maximum or minimum point. Okay. And now, of course, you'll be asking a question like, hey, wait, if the cross factorization is good for roots, completing the square is good for maximum minimum points, then what is the quadratic formula for? Right? Ah. Turns out the quadratic formula, it's really, really good at giving us insight on the roots. Right? It gives us insight on the roots. Because it turns out roots are not only for finding maximum or minimum points. It tells us a lot more things. Right? A lot more things. And that's going to be one of the last things. If you look at the checklist, the last point, roots are not only for maximum or minimum points. We're going to cover that uh, almost till the end of this video. Okay, right. Uh, so maybe I'll go ahead and check off the first checklist. That was pretty fast. Yes, quadratic formula tells us about the kind of roots that we're going to get, uh, the kind of roots we're going to get. Okay, so to start that off, I first need to explain about this, right? How do we look at roots in another way? Yes, so over here, we have a quadratic graph in red. Right, this quadratic graph follows the expression x squared minus 7x plus 10. And you can see that it intersects the x-axis at this point. x equals to 2, x equals to 5. Okay, so we know these are the roots of the quadratic expression or the quadratic equation. Okay, these are the roots. And yeah, here's another way to think about it. Huh? Here's another way to think about it. Let me draw a line first. Over here, we have another line, which is the x-axis. Okay. Instead of calling it the x-axis, is there a way I can write down the x-axis as an equation, as a graph? I can. I can write the x-axis as y equals to 0. And why am I doing this? That's because, you see, we have two equations. Okay. And then finding the roots is pretty much the same as finding the intersections between these two equations, solving them simultaneously, yes? Okay, so please copy down this, right, in your notes. Interestingly, we can solve for roots just like we solve simultaneous equations. So roots have a double identity. Not only are they roots, roots they're also solutions to certain kinds of simultaneous equations. Okay, ah, roots have a double identity. Yeah? Okay, it's just kind of like, again, okay, I know I don't have much examples like Superman, right? You think that he's just uh, a normal guy, you know, going to work and typing, you know, but actually he has a hidden identity. It's also Superman. So roots are not just roots. 
there are also sometimes solutions to simultaneous equations. So let me show you a bit more on what I'm talking about. Okay, if you don't have enough time to copy this down, you can actually pause the video. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and explain what I mean by that. Huh? Simultaneous equations. Okay. After we have equation one and equation two, hopefully you can see that equation two is this. Huh? I'm going to substitute this into equation one, which means that this y is going to be zero. Okay. So we can rewrite that down here. So we can solve this. x squared minus 7x plus 10 equals to 0. And then we know how to factorize this using cross factorization. Okay, sorry, that's a minus. Huh? Let me just erase that. x minus 2, x minus 5. Okay, so the roots, right? Okay, if you just look at the bottom blue box, right? It looks like we're solving for roots. But if we include, if you look at this one on top, together with the bottom box, it looks like we're solving simultaneous equations. And they're kind of the same thing. Yeah, they're kind of the same thing. Okay, let me talk about this uh, a bit more on decimals, yeah, on decimals, right? So very quickly, let me just show you this. Right. So this is what we have, the quadratic graph, right? I use the same expression, x squared minus seven x plus 10, and then it's intersecting with the x-axis, which is y equals to zero. Okay, here's something even more interesting, right? I'm going to go ahead and change my straight line graph. It's not y equals to zero, now it's y equals to one. What's going to happen, right? What's going to happen? Okay, let's think about this algebraically, right? Say if I uh, did this algebraically, then my first equation would be this. This is my first equation. My second equation will be y equals to one. Okay, again, if I substitute the second equation into the first equation, we have this. 1 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 10. And if I move everything to the right-hand side, which means the left-hand side will be 0, then I'll have this. 9. Okay, plus 9. So what I'm saying is, if you want to find the intersections, right? between say, okay, let me change colors here. Yeah? If I want to find the intersection between these two graphs, right, the one that I box up in pink, it's as good as solving just this quadratic equation, finding the roots of this quadratic equation, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna show you the roots. I'm gonna show you the roots of uh, the pink color box, right, that is over here. Okay, the, okay let me use a mouse. Right? Let me use a mouse to just get the, get the point accurately okay it's 1.697 uh, x equals to 1.697 and x equals to 5.303 so i just want you to keep these numbers in your head for just five seconds huh? okay next i'm going to show you the solutions the roots to these to this quadratic expression where we change the 10 to a 9 yeah okay let me just remove this in case it's confusing can you see the answer to the roots to this equation 1.697 and 5.303 is exactly the same, yeah? All we did was we shifted our quadratic graph downwards. Yeah, we shifted it down, downwards, huh? Okay, so let me move this back to 10. Oops, sorry. What did I do? Okay, let's go back. 10. Okay, yes. Let me talk about this a little bit more. Let me give another example, okay, of... Uh, Simultaneous equations being the same as solving the quadratic uh, roots. So now instead of intersecting with y equals to zero, I let it intersect with y equals to x. Y equals to x. Okay. So algebraically, let's look at this again. Algebraically, I'm trying to solve these uh, simultaneous equations. Equation one and equation two is y equals to x. So substituting again. Okay, what we have is x is equals to x squared minus 7x plus 10. Moving everything to the right-hand side, we have x squared minus 8x plus 10 equals to 0. Okay, so what I'm saying now is this, right? The roots to these is the same as the solutions to these. Okay, let me first show you the solutions, right? The solutions to these according to solving it graphically. 
right? You can see over here, the intersection is 1.551, x equals to 1.551, and x equals to 6.449. So I'm just going to write that down, right? This is x equals, oops, sorry, x equals to 1.551 and 4.559. Did I get it right? Okay, I have a goldfish. I have the memory of a goldfish. I forget numbers really quickly. So let me just check. It's 6.449. 1.551 and 6.449. Let me change this to 6.449. Okay, then next, I'm going to show you right, this graph, the one below. Huh? So let's look at that first. Let me remove these two graphs so that it's not so confusing. I'm going to show you this. Okay, and you can see that the solutions, right, the roots to this. Green graph, the green projected graph is 1.551 and 6.449. Yeah? So the roots of this quadratic equation is the same as solving the simultaneous equation uh, of another two pairs of equations. Yeah? So roots have a double identity. Hmm? Double identity. Yeah? Okay. So let me just go back very quickly to the notes and let me clear all this away. Yeah? So roots. Hmm, they have a double identity. Okay, now I'm going to move on to something else. Okay, let's look at what Gauss said last week. Huh? Last week we said that uh, Gauss had this uh, theorem, right? If your degree of a polynomial, sorry, polynomial is one, you have one root. If your degree is two, you have two roots, three, and three roots, so on and so forth. Yeah, we are particularly interested in the case of two, right? Because we are doing quadratic equations. So we should always have two roots when we look at uh, quadratic right, expressions, quadratic equations. Okay, And you call this the fundamental theorem of algebra. Okay, So here's a joke. Right? It does not look fundamental, nor is it algebraic. Yes, okay. Because when we started learning algebra in primary 6 or set 1, we never knew about this. Okay, And to prove this, right? Uh, to prove that uh, you have a degree one polynomial, you have one root, degree two polynomial, you have two roots. It's actually very, very difficult, right? It's beyond the realm of secondary school students. Yeah, but if you're interested, you can actually go and uh, watch some YouTube videos. It is actually a very, very smart proof uh, how he got it. Okay, so here's another joke. <laughs> right, if you thought the fundamental theorem of algebra was bad, wait till you check out his fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Yeah? Okay, this fundamental theorem of arithmetic is something you also learned. It's actually what you learned in set one, prime factorization. That is actually his fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Yeah, so maths was kind of very different uh, back in the 1800s, right? So gets a glimpse at how confusing it is back then. Uh, not saying that it's not confusing now, but different kind of confusion. Okay, so let's look at Gauss, right? What is the problem with this, right? So he claims that for every quadratic polynomial, quadratic expression, quadratic equation, you should have two roots. But let's look at this graph over here that we plot in decimals. If it has two roots, why is it not intersecting the x-axis? Hmm? Yes, can you see? The x-axis is over here. Yeah? And this graph is not intersecting, not touching the x-axis at all. What is happening, Gauss? Okay. So he says, hey, look, not all roots are visible. Huh? In this case, the roots are there, but it's just not shown on this graph. Right? So he claims that there are roots, but they are just not on this graph. Okay. So again, you can copy that down. We'll talk about what he means by it. Hmm, they are not there. Okay, they are not there. Okay. So yeah, that kind of is gonna answer the third point on our checklist, right? Real roots. Got fake roots one, man? Huh? So we're going to talk about real roots and fake roots. Huh? Okay, let's go on to the next page. Ah, now we're going to talk about the discriminant. Okay, the discriminant. Before we talk about what is the discriminant, what do you think the word means? Where do you think this word comes from? Right? You might have guessed it. It comes from the word discriminate. Right? Discriminate means to tell the difference between different things. 
right? Being able to tell the difference. Yeah. So what is this thing that's supposed to tell us? What difference is it going to tell us? And where is it? Okay, I'm going to tell you that discriminant okay, is inside the quadratic formula and it's over here. Right? It's the terms inside the square root operator. Right? That's the terms inside the square root operator is known as the determinant. Let me write this down. This is known as the D. Okay, yellow ink is a bad idea. Let me write this in, say, purple. This is the, oh no, not determinant, the discriminant. Confusing them together. Yeah, this is the discriminant. Yeah, spelling is difficult. Sorry. Right, discriminant. In case is, this is uh, too scribbly, please look at this one. This one is a much nicer, right, <laughs> typed out word, discriminant. Okay. Uh, so what does the discriminant do? Right. Often we can tell whether there are solutions to X if we observe carefully the discriminant. Hmm. So what do you mean? We have no solution to X? Hmm. When will we have no solutions to X? Hmm. Okay, some of you might know this, right? When we square root negative numbers. Huh? You can go ahead and take out your calculator and try this. Your calculator will tell you math error. Right, which means we cannot go on right any further right if you were to do it uh, conventionally right then we get stuck here and x will give us no solutions yes so by looking at this thing here b squared minus y c if it is negative we will not get any solutions okay so i'm going to go very quickly to the next page so if you look at the next page okay this is our first case for the discriminant d stands for the discriminant so I just write it once. This is talking about the discriminant. Okay. And the discriminant actually is just b squared minus 4ac. Okay. So in the first case, if b squared minus 4ac is less than zero, then we will have no solutions. Okay. We also have two other cases where b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. It also looks, it also gives us insight to what kind of roots. It's a different kind of roots. Yeah? And then in the last one where the discriminant is more than zero, that also tells us uh, about the type of roots that we're getting. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and check off our checklist. Point number two, discriminant that is done, right? The discriminant is B squared minus 4C. The thing that the two terms that sit inside the square root operator, that is going to tell us the difference between what kind of roots we are getting. Okay, that's what the discriminant is. Okay, very quickly, let's look at the first case, the worst case scenario, right? When we have no solutions, when we are stuck. Okay, oh, sorry, before that, yeah, let's just very quickly look at this. Uh, the intersection between a quadratic graph and a linear graph. Yes, this will always produce two solutions. Turns out this is not true yeah please write a very big not true across this yes why why is it not true right you can see very clearly here there are two intersections right isn't there two solutions so let me go to desmos and show you this right so hmm. depending on the equation of our quadratic uh, graph sometimes right our quadratic graph can move up and down yeah it can move up and down so can you see that for certain values of our certain types of quadratic graphs, there are no intersections at all. Like, like right now, okay, then now there's intersections again, right? Then we have two solutions, and then suddenly there's no solutions. Yes, and then there's two solutions again on the screen. And as it moves up, you can see there are no intersections, there are no solutions, no roots. Okay, so when it has no roots, that's where we are interested in. Right. This is our worst case scenario when D is less than zero. Huh? Let me go back to the notes. Here. Our first case is this. Okay. The example given is 2.5x squared minus 5x plus 5 equals to zero. So you can identify this 2.5 here, a positive 2.5 as A. Right? The coefficients of our terms in x squared and x and our constants are A, B and C respectively. Okay, you can substitute this into the quadratic formula. This is what you should get. Okay, and we want to pay particular attention to 
what's inside here? Our b square minus 4ac. Okay, so if you calculate this, the discriminant, in this case, is going to be negative, negative 25. Okay, normally at this step, we will be stuck. We'll stop, right? And then we'll go on to say that, right? This has no real roots. Okay, so at the bottom of your notes, you should see this, right? At a sec 3, sec 4 level, we say this, which is no real roots. Okay, the parts that are over here, right, from this step onwards here, is what you do in junior college onwards, where you learn about imaginary numbers uh, and complex numbers, right? So instead of saying no real roots, they are actually roots, right? So Gauss was actually right. You have roots, but they are just not real, right? They are imaginary, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and check uh, point number three off. So even though there are no intersections between the quadratic graph and say the x-axis, or maybe there's no intersection between a quadratic graph and another straight line, yes, that doesn't mean that there are no roots, right? They are just uh, imaginary or complex roots, right? So let's look at what that means. Okay, if you solve for root roots, right? Remember that roots has two identities. Either you look at roots or you look at simultaneous equation solutions. Okay, look at roots, it means that it will not cut the x-axis. It will not cut the x-axis. If you think about it in terms of simultaneous equation, what it means is that you have a quadratic graph and maybe your straight line just doesn't touch the quadratic graph. This is what, this is what it means when the discriminant is less than zero. Okay? I'm going to move on to the next one, right? When D, the discriminant, is equals to zero. What happens then? Okay? So in this example, I have given another quadratic equation. Okay, this is your A, this is your B, and this is your C. Okay, substituting that into the quadratic formula, and we pay particular attention to this. What's inside the square root operator? We get zero, right? And then we go ahead and solve this. What you get is this. Okay, so we don't usually write this. This is kind of strange, but I just wanted to highlight that there are actually two roots. The proper way to write this is just equals to one. There's only one answer, and that is one. Okay, so here's something to think about. Okay, although we have only one solution or one root, why do we say there are two equal roots? Yeah, so you can think about that. We talked about this in the first lesson. We talked about this in the first lesson that uh, the quadratic graph is actually a multiplication of the two linear graphs. If you only have one root, then you only have one linear expression. You'll never be able to get a quadratic uh, equation. Yes. So let's look at um, what this means graphically. What this means graphically is that, okay, let's talk about roots first, right? If you solve for roots, it means that your quadratic graph is going to touch, right? Not cut, huh? it's just going to touch at one point, right? It's going to touch the x axis at only one point. You may call that. You can say that the x-axis is tangential to your quadratic graph, tangential, or the y-axis is tangent, right, to your quadratic graph. Okay. If you think about the simultaneous equation, it just means that you have a quadratic graph, and that line, right, is just going to touch at one point, right. Sorry, I'm really bad at drawing straight lines, right. It's going to touch maybe at just one point. Okay, at uh, just one point. Okay. Now, moving on to the last case, right? Last case for the determinant, uh, not determinant, the discriminant, where it is more than zero, right? Here, our A is equals to one. This is A, A is equals to one. B equals to negative five, C equals to positive four. Substitute that into the quadratic formula. You get this. And again, we want to pay particular attention to the discriminant over here. You find that what you get is uh, a positive value. You have square root of 9. Yes, and you go and solve this, you get 5 plus minus 3 divided by 2, you get two roots, right? So we call this two distinct and real roots. Distinct means different. Two different roots and they are real. Okay, so here's something to think about. Why is it not three roots, right? By now you should know how to answer this question. And yeah, what that means in terms of solving a quadratic equation, 
Yeah, you just get two roots at two separate points. What it means in terms of simultaneous equations is this. You have a quadratic graph and your line gives you two solutions. That's what it means. Yeah, so uh, that is the end of today's lesson, right? We talked about the three different uh, cases for your discriminant. And I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, strike this off, right? The last point, the last checklist point over here. Okay, it turns out roots not only show us the maximum and minimum points, it also tell us about uh, the solutions to simultaneous equations between a curve and a straight line. Okay, and not only that, not only the number of intersections, it also tells the type of intersection. Is it no intersection or is it just touching or is it two clear and different points, cutting at two very different points? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers!